this way. Come this way. Closer. Better. Closer is always better. Like you know, especially. Well, yeah. I like that motto. Sit on this side. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, hi. How are you? You're supposed to say hi back. Call and respond. How are you? I, I gave a talk yesterday in British Columbia on imagination changes everything. And I said to them, uh, the audience, you know, there are, it was a spiritual conference. I said, how many of you feel like you have a great imagination? Raise your hand. And like only a third of the room raised their hand. And I thought, oh my God, that's bizarre. Here you use contemplation to understand how the inner and outer worlds work. And you don't think you're using your imagination to get there? So I had them repeat after me, which I think is a good thing for us all to start with. I have a fantastic imagination. Oh, I, I have a fantastic, fantastic imagination. imagination. Okay, see, so there you go. Um, and so it is, right? <laughs> okay, so um, my name is Patty. This is what I do. Uh, I'm going to give you a very short history. Uh, and as a demonstration, you know, because what I want to do is demonstrate how to do this, and I'm going to use my style, uh, my most basic style of mind mapping. So um, this is me, Patty. This is the very first way I learned how to mind map. So what you do is you put yourself or the object or the thing or the idea in the center. How many of you have done mind mapping before? Okay, so it's not rocket science. Very simple technique. Then you put out here a few things like, okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. So um, I was an actor for many years in Seattle. I ended up going on Broadway. Whoa, can you believe it? There I am. So I'm going to draw a little theater here, put myself in that space. Uh, that was a, one career I had. Then I had an artistic break. Oh, too bad. What happened? I got a review in Portland that said, can't sing, can't dance, can't act, can't write, don't bother. <laughs> I thought, okay, I need to do something else. So I moved to San Francisco. Let's see, how could we depict San Francisco? Give me an idea. Golden, Golden Gate, Gate Bridge. Bridge. Right, okay. So Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, I moved to San Francisco, and there I became a gardener because, well, what else was I going to do? Uh, if I was only an actor, right, I was sad and bedraggled. Oh, poor me. And then someone introduced me to the drama therapy program at CIIS, okay? So um, then I became a drama therapist. Okay. Very fun career. Very active. The bad news was I wasn't that great as a therapist. I was very directive. <laughs> you have a drinking problem. Get into AA. That man is bad for you. Leave him. Okay. So someone said to me, someone said, really, you should go. You should go into business because people love you to tell them what to do in business. So there I was. I went into business and I worked um, as a little corporate um, change agent. As a matter of fact, I was more like a punching bag. So when, when they would fire people, they would bring Patty in and she would get them all re-energized and go back to work. Okay. Boom, boom, I get in the room. They just love me. You can imagine. Outside consultant coming in. Okay, so this was a great job to have for a while. <coughs> Gave me great experience. But then one day, I was in a room, and I saw a guy um, draw a picture on the wall of what we were talking about. This beautiful graphic representation. And I said, I think I can do that. That guy's making a lot of money drawing pictures, and I want to do that. And so I became a graphic recorder. OK, so there's my little history. And I started a business, and it was in uh, Denver first, because of course, I had to get dug out of the actor's graveyard. I got into a show about women and aging. It became a runaway hit. And so I had to perform every day again. And it happened to be in Colorado. So flying from San Francisco to Colorado. So I decide, hey, I'm going to move to Colorado. And while I'm there, I, this is me. Uh, I'm really bad at drawing horses, so I just won't. <laughs> this is me. Still the same here. Okay, bad, bad idea. Glasses. There we go. 
And so I became really a business consultant. I started a company, Alchemy, the Art of Transforming Business. We had three offices. One, um, here's the globe. We had one in, um, in Europe, so in London. So what would we draw for London? Big Ben. Big Ben, very good, okay. So we had one there, we had one in Colorado, so that would be a pony. And then uh, my partner got a job here in Seattle, so I thought, oh, why not? I'll move back to the Northwest. So I moved back here, and so uh, here we are. And uh, that was really great, and I loved working with them. Those other partners, they were great. One was an expert in sustainability, one was an expert in coaching, but I was not an expert in being part of a business. Just didn't work. I didn't like it. After 10 years of very successful, winning a lot of awards, I left and started my own firm, now called Up Your Creative Genius. Up yours, if you don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> here we are today. Okay. <coughs> All right, so that's a little about me. This pen is really bad, so it's going to go right now into the trash. Yeah, another one bites the dust. All right, so today what I'm going to show you are a couple of things. Basic concepts about mind mapping. How to do it their way, you know, so what, what the experts do. Um, some basic shapes. I want to get you up drawing right away, okay, because it's, uh, you know, integration of the right, left side of the brain. And then we want to find your way. So we're going to actually take what you did yesterday, and we're going to have you synthesize it into a mind map or something like that. If you don't want to do that, I don't care. You can do what I did, which is draw your life, although I probably would have done it differently had I thought more <laughs> about it, but I didn't. And then we're going to do a little show and tell. You're going to show us, and we're going to look around at what everybody did. How's that sound? We're all going to do all of that in, oh good, we got 34 minutes left. Okay, I got a little extra time. Okay, any questions? Okay, so let's start then with some color, shall we? Everybody say yes. Oh, yes. yes. The the color's fabulous. So, Patty, you know you have till 9.30, right? Yeah, till 9.30. Yeah, yeah. So, but I have, um, oh, I'm sorry, did I say 34 minutes? Yeah. I meant an hour and four minutes. Yeah. Just came out wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think I'm not a mathematician. I'm in trouble. Okay. Uh, so. Uh, there are a bunch of different things about mind mapping and of course I'm a visual person so I'm going to have to use some kind of metaphor so uh, there let's talk first about the history of mind mapping who knows anything about mind mapping based on what you read did you actually have a chance to read anything have you read anything by Nancy Margulies or Tony Buzon they get the book today oh you get the book today we oh, are fantastic you didn't get to know in advance all right so the history of mind mapping is that um, philosophers used it. So in the time of Aristotle, uh, they used it to consolidate some of his thinking and his great thoughts about stuff. And also other philosophers during that period of time whose names I will not remember. Uh, this Then... Um, in the 50s, there was a guy, and his name, let me just get it right. Oh, uh, his name was Alan Collins. So in the 50s, Alan Collins, spelled this way, used mind mapping as a means of capturing uh, about what he wanted to know, human learning. Okay, so I don't know how he did this, and I couldn't find any replication of it. And then uh, that brings us up to sort of the people in the present, which is Tony Buzan. And I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly even, but this guy, uh, in the 50s, he started to do mind mapping as a means of depicting concepts. And he um, considers himself, and this is always a clue for me, when he considers himself the founder of modern day mind mapping. Okay. Uh, that, and that, that could be true, but I also know that um, Nancy Margulies is another person who, uh, Mar, Mar, Margulies, she 
is actually, I think, the founder of graphic recording. Even though David Sibbett would say he is, I would not agree. I think she is. I met her, and I saw some of her early work as, and his early work. So right around the same time, 